Hello. We're continuing our look at long-term decision making and we're going to focus on one particular type of um, financial analysis tools which is discounted cash flows in particular. We're going to look at the very start of that topic and the calculation of basic net present value. When we're appraising long-term projects, we have this range of tools at our disposal. We have our payback method, we have the accounting rate of return, and then a large chunk of techniques under the heading of discounted cash flow techniques. And this is the part that we're going to introduce today. With the discounted cash flow techniques, we're taking into consideration the time value of money. And basically, the idea is that if we have time now, so that's now, T0, a thousand pounds, that is not worth, at the end of year one, a thousand pounds. We'd much prefer to have a thousand pounds now. In a year's time, that isn't going to be worth a thousand pounds because we've had to wait. And the waiting means that we would actually probably say, well, it's worth £900 to us because I don't want to wait. I want to have my money now. And so £1,000 in a year's time is actually equivalent in now terms, in present value terms, to £900. And what we've done there is we've discounted the thousand pounds in a year's time using um, a cost of capital. Now the cost of capital is quite complicated and you will learn a lot more about it as you go through your studies. If you look at the quote here from Will C, a pound today is more valuable than a pound received a year from now for the simple reason if you have a pound today, you can put it into the bank and have more than a pound a year from now. Because pounds today are worth more than pounds in the future, cash flows that are received at different times must be valued differently. And what we want to do if we're going to add up cash flows over the future years we are actually, if we're not careful, adding apples and pears. They are different. So we need to convert the future cash flows into the present value, into the now time. Take all this and convert it to now. We're going to be using, as we often do in investment analysis, um, cash flows, not profits. That's mainly because profits are calculated on the accruals basis and which ignores the time value of cash flows. So we're trying to incorporate the time value of those cash flows, which is important when those cash flows are received, rather than from an accounting point of view when they should be accrued. We also are going to assume various things about how this cash flows happen. The investment is happening now, T0. And other cash flows, it's assumed that they're going to happen at the end of the time period. Let's just illustrate all of this in a very simple example. Here we have a number of cash flows. If you add them up, you can see that they all come to £170,000. So if we're going to decide, do we do project A or do we do project B? Well, at face value, it looks that all those projects bring in the same amount of cash inflows. However, if you actually look at the timing of those cash flows, you can see that project A has the money coming in sooner. And so if we actually did the time value of money, if we discounted, I don't actually need to do the calculations, I can see that project A is going to be the preferable, the more viable project, because it has more cash coming in sooner. The problem with project B 
is we've got big chunks of cash coming right at the end of the project. So those big chunks of cash are going to be worth less to us. Here we have um, uh, an example when we're going to start to put this into a table so we can do some calculations. And this will be the format that you will do the majority of the time for simple calculations. Here we have an investment um, that costs us £850 and it's got some cash inflows. We've now been told the cost of capital. Now this is a very important concept. It's very difficult to measure, but you will be looking at, at it more um, in more detail later in your studies. I'm going to lay the um, solution out using this table here. I'm going to look at the discount factors for um, 8%. Now here I'm going to use the tables. You should all have access to a set of discount tables and these are provided in any form of assessment that you do. You can calculate these figures from per first principles, but really since tables are provided at this level, all you need to do is to be able to look up cost of capital, 8% on the tables, and then find the figures as follows. So for one year, it's going to be 0 0.926, two years 0 0.857 and for three years 0 0.794. Our cost of capital for time zero is one because the cost of that investment now is going to be £850 because that's time now, that's our present value. So we have our present value of the investment, 850. For our cash flows, our inflows of 388 in year one, we multiply that by 0.926 and that will come to 359. And then in year two, it will come to 333. Year three, it will come to 308. And that will give us our net present value. Net present value is taking our negatives and our positives, adding them all together, and that will give us a positive net present value of £150. If you produce a positive net present value, that means the project is viable. If your net present value is negative, then that project should not be undertaken. Project Projects with the highest net present value would be preferable to projects with a lower net present value. Let's have a look at a more complicated question. Here we have a machine that costs £10,000. We've got some contribution cash inflow per annum to the profits for five years and afterwards it's going to be scrapped. So here we're getting more and more complicated scenarios. Um, we've got the net present value we need to find with a cost of capital of 5%. We will lay this out in our table, just like we did there. Here's one I prepared earlier. And you could see that it's exactly the same as my very simple example. My cash flow in year five has been increased by £500 because here we've got the scrap value. So we have our um, contribution of £2,500 each year and then in year five we add to that the scrap value. Again, when we add up the figures, we have a present value of 1217 which is positive, so the project is worthwhile. Here we have many advantages to um, this technique. The biggest advantage is that it uses the time value of money. It also has the whole life of the project. It's included in the calculations, considering all relevant cash flows. We can account for risk. We can account for inflation. We can account for taxation. 
we can account for a number of things that makes the scenario more complicated but the calculations can be adapted for those complications. The disadvantages are like for many other tools. We are reliant on estimates of future cash flows and all of our calculations are only going to be as good as the estimates of the future that go into those calculations. On top of that, we have to estimate the cost of capital. That is another estimation. It can be very difficult to determine that cost of capital. And for um, non-technical people, it can be quite difficult for them to understand. Thank you very much.